Cross India. Bunzor. Yes, Cup Dime. And Dai Gratia. That we all are healthy and happy. I can see that everyone has joined. After all, what are the three Ds of the class? The three Ds are dedication, devotion and discipline. At the end of the day, if we really want to be successful, these three things are very important. Very good. Wonderful. Welcome all of you. All the brilliant learners from all across India. So I am Shruti Kara, an award winner at an academy. Let's go ahead and learn. So class, this is a glimpse of my award. You all can have a look at my award. And of course, this is me. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead. So my discount code at an academy is Escora Live. Use this code to get the discount on the plus and iconic membership. Moving further, the bumper offer that is six months plus one month free, it's still on. Go ahead, utilize that. Wonderful. Let's go ahead. Now, of course, there are two kinds of subscriptions, plus and iconic. Go ahead, get the benefit of these two subscriptions. I have already given the method to choose. The favorite ones are 24 months and 12 months because per month price is very less. Secondly, to get the discount, use the code as Coralite. And even the same code is applicable for iconic membership too. Use this code, get the benefit and start your beautiful journey. Wonderful. Let's go ahead. Doubt feature is also there. It's there in your app. When you open your app, there is an option called as Ask Doubt. Click on that option and ultimately follow the steps that have been asked, you know, by that particular software. Let's go ahead. Oh my God, I always say leaders are always readers. So let's do the RC practice through novels and at the end of the day, this is very important. Leaders are always readers. Pronounce it, repeat it as many times as you can. You know, how much, you know, it is important to read a book? Look here. The average number of books read by a CEO, Chief Executive Officer is 60 books per year, that is 5 books each month. So a CEO reads at least 5 books a month. Now the question is why? Why? What is the need? I'll tell you. The person you will be in the next 5 years depends on the books you read. Point number 1. In the next 5 years, whosoever you are going to be, let me tell you, agle 5 saal mein jo banne wale hai, wo depend karta hai, on the type of books that you are going to read as well as the people you surround yourself with. So mind it, the books you read and the company. It depends, it, it actually makes you the person you are going to be in the next five years. All across India, I'm repeating it once again. The person you'll be in the next five years is based on the books you read and the people you surround yourself with today. Wonderful, very good. Let's go ahead. Come on quickly, whenever the witchy. Yes, you'll get the dual benefit from this video. Now, what are the dual benefits? You learn about the novel and you practice RC through it. Oh my God, the book name, the novel for today is Tipping Point. But we don't know what is Tipping Point. What do I mean by this? It's by Malcolm Gladwell. But then whose picture is this? Who is he? He is Malcolm Gladwell, a British-born Canadian author of five New York Times bestsellers. Trust me, five. He's a bestseller of five books, the famous five New York Times NYT bestseller. He's a British-born Canadian author of five New York bestsellers. Wonderful. So he is Malcolm Gladwell. Next and he is, of course, the co-founder of Pushkin Industries. They are into podcasts. He is the co-founder of those industries as well. What next? He has been included in the Times 100 Most Influential People is Times List. 100 Most Influential People. And he was appointed to the Order of Canada on 30th of June 2011. Right? So, first of all, you should know who is Malcolm Gladwell. He's author of the five famous New York Times bestsellers. He's a co-founder of Pushkin Industries. And of course, 
is included in the list of the Times 100 most influential people. Wow. Now, what is this tipping point? We are going to study about the book. The book is Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. We have read about Malcolm Gladwell. But what is this tipping point? What is the tipping point? Let's go ahead. Find out all across India. You know, tipping point is a point. At which small change, add up to cause a large, more significant change. You know, you do a small change and it adds up. It adds up to something and then when it adds up to something, it actually causes a large, you know, more significant change. Let's find out the definition is okay, but this is just a definition. It needs explanation. Let's go ahead. You know, have you ever thought out this particular thing? That why only a few books become bestsellers but others don't? I mean, all across India, right now I can see a lot of genius and, you know, intelligent people have joined the session from all across India. Of course, these are my students. They have got the values that I have given to them. I'm very happy. But have you ever thought on this fact why only particular books are bestsellers but others don't? What is the reason? Why tipping point? Why some other books, they are only the bestsellers? Let's go ahead and find out. No, before we find out, one more question is there. Why it becomes cool for teenagers to smoke? Most of the teenagers, they don't smoke. Nobody wants to smoke because they like it. Of course, it has got nicotine and initially when you smoke, it gives you a very bad taste and, you know, you start coughing. So why it is considered as very cool? Oh my God, he smokes. Why? Point number two, you know, just think about it. Why one idea goes viral and others not? Again, I'm asking you the same thing. Why it becomes cool for teenagers to smoke? Point number two. Why one idea goes viral, others don't. So here, the author, the gentleman, Malcolm Gladwell, he's, attempt, he's trying to answer this question with this idea called as the tipping point. Now, he's going to answer you this question that why a particular idea goes viral. Let's go ahead. What is this magic moment? Is magic going to happen? Yes, magic happens in our classes, in our live sessions. Am I correct all across India? <laughs> in our live sessions, magic happens, miracle happens. Yes. So what is that magic moment in this tipping point? Even Malcolm Gladwell, the gentleman is talking about uh, this uh, magic moment. What is this? It's when an idea, a trend I'll repeat once again, some idea, trend, or social behavior crosses a certain threshold level, that is the final brim, where it reaches up to the brim, and it spreads like a wildfire. Jungle ki aap ki tarah wo itna fail jata hai. That is what is the magic moment. It actually reaches certain threshold level, and then it spreads like wildfire. So it's talking about an idea, or, of course, a social behavior too. Okay, what else? So, you know, he characterizes his book as the biography of an idea. The idea of how things spread. Wow, all of you are going to be managers and leaders tomorrow. You should know that how an idea spreads. Is it like grapevine? No. Uh, to be honest, that is not a good thing. <laughs> Rumors and grapevines, no. But then ultimately... You're getting a chance to learn through this video that how an idea spreads and ultimately not only spreads, it becomes viral. Let's go ahead. So, you know, he says, the author says that the key is to think of bestsellers, fashion trend. Think about some bestsellers, you know, of course, books, some fashion trends, maybe polka dot or the rug jeans that I keep on usually talking in the live session. And maybe some other viral sensations. So he says, he calls all of them as epidemics. As they all share a basic underlying pattern. Now the question comes back, why this epidemic word is used? We are already grappling with the pandemic situation. And again, you know, something there as epidemics. What is this? No. It is totally different thing, but the underlying principle, the underlying concept is same. So what is this epidemic all about? Now we have just understood maybe an idea, maybe a fashion trend, maybe, you know, some particular video. 
it has gone viral it has spread like wildfire but why this word epidemic has come up let's go ahead find out i'm pretty sure all of you must have understood something but let me make this clear you know he describes tipping point as a moment when a trend turns into epidemic so basically ultimately the meaning of this title of the book is that when an idea turns into an epidemic that point is called as the tipping point please clear this point all across india jab ek idea epidemic ban jata hai ya epidemic mein convert ho jata hai then that particular moment is called as the tipping point it has reached the threshold level and ultimately it has spread like wildfire and ultimately obviously it spreads like wildfire and you know malcolm is providing several examples he is trying to relate this epidemic with the flu how the flu starts it starts by spreading slowly through a population it starts with some particular you know chunk of population then day by day the number of daily transmissions increases day by day that starts the infection it goes viral because it's contagious right so this transmission rate continues to increase some population then bigger circle then bigger and it's you know it's continuously increasing and ultimately it reaches a tipping point this is what happened in india so you can relate the situation and that is the purpose of taking this particular novel in today's session where the epidemic spins out of control so i'll tell you let me tell you like first of all if you try to relate this with the flu so how flu spreads first of all it affects certain population like certain people in the population then it increases then of course it's gradually increasing but finally it comes at a stage when it spins out of control and that particular stage when it reaches that that is called as the tipping point that is why we are relating the social trends ideas social behavior with the epidemic perfectly fine so although this book was written in 2000 but i'm pretty sure that all of you can understand why i'm doing this analogy it perfectly applies to the corona virus pandemic you can imagine the corona virus curve of growth you know initially there would have been a gradual increase dheera dheera it was increasing then once the tipping point has reached the curve that curve jolted out of equilibrium immediately as i said it spin out of control it tipped why now why that tipped of course the, this is bacteria but something has happened maybe there was no you know lockdown period was not was not there there was no lockdown something changed people you know forgot that corona is there they started doing some social activities they didn't maintain the social distancing so why that particular pandemic epidemic idea tip something has happened and some change has occurred in one or two or three of those areas maybe in some of the areas some change has happened okay so these three agents of change so there are three agents of change according to the award winning author malcolm gladwell and what you know what are these changes the first rule the first is called as the law of the few second is the stickiness factor and the third is the power of context the law of the few the stickiness factor and the power of context now what is this just you know keep this in your mind i'll explain this one but for the time being please be sure what is tipping point i'm pretty sure all of you are clear i'm repeating again for all of you when a particular idea right trends and it goes out of control it spreads now of course out of control is like a you know epidemic but then it spreads and spreads like wildfire that is what you call tipping point and he is using this idea he is using this concept to understand that why some ideas some fashion trends some social behavior some best sellers they have actually become viral rather others they didn't go that you know viral or they didn't get that popularity perfectly fine let's go ahead 
Now, what is this social? We talked about epidemic. We talked about tipping point. But what do I specifically mean by social epidemic? Let's go and find out. Of course, there are a lot of points in modern history, ideas. You all are going to be managers and leaders. So you have to deal with ideas, products, messages and behaviors. Right? So various points in modern history, ideas, products, messages and other behaviors have suddenly and unexpectedly become very popular. All of a sudden you realize, oh my God, the rug jeans become popular. All of a sudden you realize, oh my God, polka dots have become popular. Right? So, there were several points in the history class when several ideas, products, even messages, they have suddenly and unexpectedly become very popular. Certain clothes become fashionable. Crime rate go down at an unprecedented rate. Maybe some religion has found millions of new worshippers. Maybe, you know, the way Buddha the followers of Buddha, you know, it has been increasing. It, it is actually increasing. The way followers have been increasing over these years, it's tremendous. So why this particular thing? Right? What is this social epidemic? Now, this phenomenon is called a social epidemic. I'll repeat again, once again, what did I just say, class? Social epidemic. Abhi we were talking about the actual epidemic or the pandemic. But what is a social epidemic? When a certain idea, product or message, maybe certain clothes, they have started trending very suddenly and unexpectedly. This particular phenomenon is called as a social epidemic. So intuitively, most people would like to think that social epidemics, no, social epidemics <laughs> it's not the case that every time it happens slowly and gradually, no. But in fact, trust me, many changes in the society are so sudden. These changes are so sudden class. They almost seem to happen overnight. A rock a particular product, a message, a idea, it's not popular. It's not always the case that the change happens slowly and gradually, no. The moment at which a social epidemic goes from invisible, seemingly ubiquitous stage is called again a tipping point. A social epidemic of jabbi, a social epidemic, a invisible stage, say, essay stage, whether you open TV, whether you open radio, whether you open YouTube, whether you look at the billboards in the street, that idea, that particular social epidemic now all these things i'm covering under the umbrella social epidemic that idea behavior clothes product message i'm taking an umbrella term social epidemic so the moment the social epidemic goes from an invisible state to a seemingly ubiquitous ubiquitous is like what is the meaning of ubiquitous all across india everybody abhilasha namisha iman shubham rohan so it's present everywhere. The meaning of ubiquitous is present everywhere. So this is called as the tipping point. And this particular book seeks to understand that how social epidemics happen, point number one, and whether it's possible to start and control them. For example, some social epidemic has happened. Can we actually control it? Is it possible to start? You are going to be the managers and leaders. You should know this fact. You're going to be the product launchers tomorrow. You could be in the product or the service industry, right? So you should know that is it possible to stop and control these social epidemics? And how do they happen? So there are three ways, class, to understand social epidemics. The people who cause them, kin logo ne ye social epidemics start here, point number one. For example, the Me Too movement, it was kind of a social epidemic. Everybody was, you know, putting the hashtag Me Too. So the people who cause them, we need to understand who causes actually these social epidemics. The content, what is the content of these epidemics? The product messages, the ideas or behaviors, that is the content. Point number one, people. Point number two, content. Point number three, their environment or context. What is the context under which they are taking place? That is a third point, right? Now, each way corresponds to a different rule or law of how social epidemics work. 
सो क्लास इफ आई टॉक अबाउट पीपल दैट इज द फर्स्ट थिंग जो मैंने आपको बताया कि किन लोगों ने ये सोशल एपिडेमिक स्टार्ट किया तो तीन तरह के लोग होते हैं देर आर काइंड ऑफ थ्री काइंड ऑफ पीपल एंड दे प्ले अ मेजर रोल इन सोशल एपिडेमिक ये जो सोशल एपिडेमिक स्टार्ट होता है देर आर थ्री काइंड ऑफ पीपल अकॉर्डिंग टू ग्लैडवेल ही हैज गिवन द नेम्स कनेक्टर्स मेवंस एंड सेल्समैन प्लीज get to know these terms connectors mevan and salesman now who are these connectors as the name suggests la they have got so many connections you know they can easily spread information to many other people they are they are very active maybe on fb maybe on insta maybe other they have got a lot of connections and they are very good that is why you know author has given the name connectors so let's take an example for example if someone know about an exciting new product you come to know in the market that there is some exciting product and if you are in connector let's talk if you know maima is a connector so the connector will tell his or her friends now maima has got friends a lot of friends right maybe palak neharika you know richa so maybe she is going to tell all her friends that this is a new product and you should try it she starts explaining why this is a good product and why it's a good bargain why it's a good deal now when there is an important piece of information that needs to be spread quickly like word about a hot new product a particular product aaya and you want this products related information bahut jaldi market mein spread ho jaye so in that case connectors are considered very helpful he is likely to help get the word out faster baki logo se zyada connectors aapki us information ko spread karne mein help karenge they would be able to do, do you know to do that on their own of course they'll do that on their own because they have got a lot of connections now the second kind of person who plays an important role in social epidemics is called a maven yes the second kind of person is called as a maven now what do these people yeah these people you know do a maven loves acquiring knowledge they are hungry they are crazy about knowledge they just want to quench their thirst for the knowledge and they share what he or she knows with others whatever they know uh, let's talk about archal let's talk about anu so maybe consider them in the category of maven now they want to share it with dinesh what do they know am i correct all across india getting the point connectors tipping point and now i am talking about maven maven just loves to acquire knowledge and if they get anything on their hands of they just love to share inko knowledge lena pasand hai aur jaise knowledge lete hai baki logo se share karte hai so if there is something new happening maybe some new trend then this person will definitely share what he she knows with friends and acquaintances jaise inko pata chala that there is something new some cool new trend and they have gathered the knowledge they'll share it with others that is what they call mavens for example when someone tells another person how great something is maybe i am driving you know a car of some brand and i said that this car has got a very good mileage so that i am telling to someone else now that person become interested in trying out whatever the speaker recommends whatever this maven is recommended because he has the knowledge we know that he is a technology geek maybe aap sab ki family mein bhi aisa hota hoga kisi ko let's say technology mein interest hai किसी को किसी और एरिया में मे बी मशीन में इंटरेस्ट है किसी को लेट से यू नो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी के बहुत सारे डिफरेंट वर्क में इंटरेस्ट है सो वेन दे रिकमेंड जनरली यू लिसन टू देम यू लिसन टू देर एडवाइस वेन दे रिकमेंड सो वेन वन पर्सन शेयर समथिंग इंटरेस्टिंग विद अनदर राइट सो न्यूज स्प्रेड वेरी क्विकली फ्रॉम वन फ्रेंड टू अनदर बिकॉज दे ट्रस्ट ईच अदर दैट इज वॉट यू कॉल्ड मेवंस राइट finally the third category is salesman connectors mavens and salesman because we were talking about no ki log important hai teen tarah ke log important hai connectors mavens and salesman 
what is the work of salesman they try to persuade you they try to persuade you into things like buying products ye le lo they change their behavior you know changing their behavior by giving them advice they try to change your behavior by giving you their advice their ideas you know they'll tell you that your life could be much better if you take this product if you buy this brand what is that line siska led isko laga dala to life <laughs> jinga lala right all across india so class if someone becomes aware of some sort of trend maybe you know you got aware of some sort of trend going around for example let's say you all are obsessed with one cell phone with one brand line mein lag ke lete ho na <laughs> you make a queue you form a queue and then you try to you know buy that brand of mobile so let's assume salesman might try out whatever he she has heard about maybe salesman ne jo suna hai wo aapko batayega he try to tell you right that after all you know why not you try this why not you try that it's probably worth checking out so what he is trying to do he is trying to convince you so this is the first law of social epidemics class which is called as the law of the few that means to become an idea spread like wildfire first people act as the biggest change it could be biggest it could not be but law of the few talks about people so there are three kind of people the first one is connectors maven and salesman connectors based on their connection maven based upon their knowledge salesman based upon their skills of persuasion now the second law is called as the concept of stickiness this is the second law of social epidemics right now what is this law saying that stickiness what is this are we going to put some pevy stick or glue no no you know it's a critical component in tipping now you have understood what is tipping when an idea when a you know social epidemic tips and it just it is jolted out of equilibrium and it simply spins out of control so that stickiness factor is very important for an idea to tip what is this this is like it refers to how likely a message is going to be remembered for example today i show you something amazon amazon ad so every time an amazon ad comes on the television or you know youtube what is that tag line right ghar ki dukaan aur apni dukaan it is there in your mind so stickiness is that how long that idea that message stays with you stick kar gaya chipak gaya dimag mein getting the point all across india so it also matters when it comes to determining whether others are going to pass the message along i got some idea right i i realized that oh my god this idea is good i saw this in youtube or i saw it somewhere and i realized this is good but am i going to pass it to others so when a message is sticky more and more people obviously you you consider something no if you get a sweet in your hand it is you know it is going to attract it's definitely going to attract a lot of ants and and you feel that stickiness in your hands even ants will be attracted to the stickiness on your fingers so if a message is similarly if a message is sticky more and more people are going to be willing to share it it's so sticky right because it's so sticky i am willing to share it with others and this will lead to an epidemic this can lead to an epidemic now it's very difficult sometimes to actually pin down the reasons that why some messages are sticky and others are not why do we consider that that particular idea was sticky and this is not there are certain psychological ways to make messages irresistible even if even you know children are known to like repetition it makes the idea sticky if you want a child to learn something you have to repeat it multiple times that is why now the author is coming to the fact that why a particular message becomes sticky whereas other messages are not ever had a jingle kabhi aisi koi jingle suni hai that he couldn't stop humming 
Maybe you remember that jingle, yeah, my pumpkin, pumpkin, hello, honey, bunny. <laughs> I don't know, but that is like, that was a kind of strange, you know, uh, but then it was so sticky that we were unable to get them out of our heads. It was so powerful. <laughs> it was kind of so sticky, you know, that jingle. We just can't get it out of our head. So why? Has it got any kind of, you know, powerful message inside it? No. But it's just like that, you know, you're my pumpkin, pumpkin. So this is like what you call stickiness. The message was very sticky. It became so popular. Right? Wonderful. So, you know, don't think that it's always the major changes. In how we present things that matter. Agar hum koi cheats, koi particular product, you know, present karte hain. To zaruri nahi hai that I have to, you know, do some major change. Even some small change is okay. Minor change can produce massive result. It's not like that. You have to completely overhaul it. You have to completely change it. Even minor changes can produce massive results. Why? You know, because success often hinges on small details. Work on that small details. Even that is a funda I always tell you to follow in your life as well. Look at the smaller details. How you're going to place your message. What will be the sequencing? Immediately a child show has ended. Maybe in some time of the day on television, some child show comes at some particular time. So you want your advertisement to come immediately before that uh, particular show that you know child show kids show cartoon show or maybe after that particular show or maybe in between so what is important placements and sequencing rather than the major changes there is no need to completely revamp the content so you all are going to be future leaders and manager ask yourself this particular question is your message irresistible bilkul hi ekdam you know mind may stick ho gaya it's so irresistible and memorable. Tomorrow, when you're going to launch anything, ask this question. Is my message irresistible and memorable? Does it stick? So, if you are able to find the answer, then definitely your product is going to your idea, your service, your trend. That particular you know, thing is going to trend like anything. Oh, come on. Let's accept the fact that not all ideas will spread. No. Not all idea, not all ideas will spread. Ideas have to spark in trust. No, it's not possible that each and every marketing campaign of yours is going to spread like wildfire. No, first they have to spark in trust. Agar if they are unable to spark the interest, so they'll never spread like a wildfire. They will never become viral. So Malcolm provides an example of a cigarette brand Winston. He's proving his point with an example of some cigarette brand called as Winston. So he advertised their new filter cigarettes in 1954. Winston cigarettes, for the Winston secrets, no? They advertised that new brand or maybe something in 1954 with the slogan. And what was the slogan? Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. What is the slogan or what was the slogan? Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. So, you know, you, you know what was the, why this idea spread like a wildfire, why this message was sticking? Class, because they deliberately incorporated a grammatical error in their slogan. They used like, ideally it has to be as. Winston tastes good as a cigarette should. But deliberately, they incorporated a grammatical error and subsequently, there was a sensation. Although it was small, but there was a sensation surrounding its slogan. So the message stuck and Winston became the most popular cigarette brand in USA. Although people are also important in disseminating information, no doubt. Earlier we talked about people, now we are talking about the stickiness of the message or the concept of the social epidemic. So no doubt people are important class. If I have to disseminate, if I have to you know, spread the information, spread the word about trends, no doubt people are important but that's not enough. 
the idea being spread must be at least somewhat intriguing the idea has to be interesting it has to be addictive in a word sticky so advertising agencies spend millions to determine that what makes something sticky for consumer why that particular consumer considers that thing as sticky now the final rule for understanding epidemic the third and the last rule is the principle of context what is this principle of context power of context you know epidemics are sensitive to the condition a particular condition hogi then only they'll tip a particular circumstance hoga time for time and place then only they'll tip that is what we call context now context often decides whether an epidemic kicks off or not like of course law of the few then it was stickiness factor that decides whether a social epidemic is going to tip or not and the third thing is context often decides whether a social epidemic kicks off or not so intuitively people believe that human beings behave in a certain way we always believe that you know human beings behave in a certain way because they have some you know natural inborn talent they have got this you know kind of personality or they have got inclinations towards xyz but you know in reality human behavior is more often dictated by the context class aap log jaise paida hue ho zaruri nahi hai your behavior will be same actually according to the author your behavior depends upon the context why what do i mean by context actually the physical environment in which you all are living for example right now you all are surrounded by the cat aspirants you all are surrounded by the people who wants to study who wants to learn it be it about novels be it about the live session be it about the reading comprehension verbal ability grammar vocabulary or critical reasoning or be it you know gk so similarly they all are pushing you towards your goal daily when you share your scores of the assignment that i share with you after every daily live session so you are also motivated to share your scores wow he shared so let me also share right himanshu did so let me also do it so that is why the context is very important and you know a good example of the importance of context in environment is that it is very important no doubt it's very important in shaping human behavior but i'll tell you i'll prove that with the example of broken window hypothesis a new term coming your way what is this broken window hypothesis have you ever heard of this term all across india okay maybe now that broken window hypothesis mean class agar aapke neighborhood mein if a window is broken and if it remains that way right you are not going to repair that window so people will assume that no one stays in that particular house and ultimately the crime rate will increase so according to this theory of broken window broken windows if there are broken windows in your neighborhood and it's it will ultimately lead to a higher violent crime aap ye nahi bol sakte ki khidki tooti hai to arrest the thieves or the robbers or the murderers you cannot only say that why you also didn't repair your broken window so based on this power of context if you really want to reduce the crime rate you should fix the windows rather than arresting people from the crime no doubt you do that but then first do your work you first fix up your broken window so in the same way to shape people's behavior you can change the context if let's say i want some other student to become equally capable like you he should be able to speak english like the way you all have learned from me so what i'll do i'll ask him to join the sessions join your sessions your live sessions right and ultimately when he realizes that the people of you know his or her age are exactly doing the same thing what they are required to do he'll also be motivated so that is why that is why if you want to be an entrepreneur 
for example then hang out with other entrepreneurs if you want to clear your head of distractions then clean your bedroom and eliminate everything in your environment that could be distracting if you feel that i want to fully concentrate i want to get rid of distractions then whatever around you is distracting you simply get rid of it if you want to be a painter many of you are very good singers in my class similarly there could be painters as well then put up paintings in your home and hang around with artist you know if you aspire to be painter then hang out with you know hang around with artist if you would like to be an entrepreneur hang around with you know other entrepreneurs that are more experienced of course than you so groups can play a critical role in the rise of epidemics yes that is what you call the power of context so whether you are a marketer educator social worker or someone and you are looking to make an impact i know all of you are going to make an impact so these three rules law of the few concept of stickiness and the power of context will determine how far your campaign succeeds or fails so there is a yt assignment complete it and please share your answers in the comment section of this video do not share your answers in the telegram share your answers of these three questions in the comment section of this video definitely i want all of your names to come on this screen and roll yourself for this ip mat dba and hotel management use the code as for our life and roll yourself into the batches then of course biggest scholarship test is also there for of 55 lakhs again use the code as for our life as written here finally in the end do three things like comment and share within just very small amount of time we came to know about this particular book right so do the three things like comment and share that's all for today thank you class adios and gracias take care all right goodbye